Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ladies, we just uh, come before our Lord Jesus today. Father, we welcome you into our presence, Lord, and are, are thankful for your word that uh, tells us that you'll be with us when, when we gather together. Lord, what a, what a promise and uh, just uh, a covenant that you've made with us that we can depend on because your word is true. You are truth itself. And we just praise you, Lord, this morning for all the things that you are to us. We ask you to uh, guide this Bible study, Lord, and may only your words be heard today. None of mine, Father, and that it would bring glory to you and to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I wanted to, Amen. Amen. Uh, I wanted to open with Psalms 103, if y'all want to turn there and read with me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the destruction who grounds you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Verse 5, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known to his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him, for he knows our name. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower in the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and a place remembers it no more, and its place remembers it no more. <clears throat> but the mercy of the Lord is everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to his children's children to keep as to such as keep his covenant and to those who remember his com commandments to do them. The Lord establishes his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless you. Bless the Lord, you angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. Heeding the word, voice of his word, bless the Lord, all you his hosts. You ministers of his, who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Let's say that again. Bless, bless the Lord, the Lord O oh my soul. My soul. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. And I'm sorry, I I, I just, I start walk, reading and my, I can't see and, I, and my voice is going. <laughs> so just say a quick prayer that the Lord will restore my voice here this morning. Uh, we finished first, uh, chapter 9, uh, 1 Samuel last week. And uh, in that, we saw where the Israelites had, had asked for a king, and God showed Samuel that Saul was to be the man. He's from the tribe of Benjamin. And uh, anybody remember anything about the, uh, the tribe of Benjamin?
It was one of the it was lower the tribes. Smallest, it was Not the it. smallest tribe. Yes. And the land it was given was a small portion. It was taken from a small portion of the tribe of Judah um, to give them the land. Yes. Uh, and so uh, at the end of uh, <clears throat> chapter 9, we see where Saul uh, tells Samuel to send away. He, he stayed, he's eaten of the, the meat, the choice meat that usually is set aside for the, the high priest. And Samuel gives that to, to, to Saul to show his, um, what would you say, um, what would be a good word, Marlene, his uh, choice. Status. Um, I'm sorry? Status. Status, yes, that's a good word, thank you. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so... He, he wakes him up and tells him it's time to go. He woke him up at dawn, uh, at the dawn of the day, and uh, and told him to get up, that he could send him on his way. And the lat in verse twenty seven it says, and as they were going down to the outskirts of the city, Samuel said to Saul, "Tell the servant to go ahead of you, or of us." And he went on, but you. Stay here while I may announce to you the word of God. So chapter 10 starts. And uh, Samuel is, uh, so let's, let's see. Who will read the first uh, <coughs> few verses for me? Uh, let's see. Uh, read verses 1 and 2 down to verse 3. On Samuel 10? 10, 10, 10, 1 and 2. Yes, please. Okay. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, He had, had not the Lord appointed you to be prince over his people Israel, and you shall reign over the people of the Lord. And you will save them from the hand of their surrounding enemies. And this shall be the sign to you that the Lord has anointed you to be prince over his heritage. And that's from um, English Standard Version. Okay. So <clears throat> he takes a flask of oil and anoints him and also kisses his head. So... Uh, at this, we have to, to realize that when someone is anointed by the Lord, uh, it qualifies them uh, to for a certain task. The task for Saul was to become king. And God, when he anoints us, he it qualifies us. When we're anointed with the Holy Spirit, when we accept Jesus as our Savior, and then we become anointed for his service. So uh, he not only does he call with the the spirit, but he anoint, uh, he uh, he qualifies the called and he equips the called. So God will never ask us or anoint us to do anything that he doesn't also prepare us for. I can remember uh, when I had really rededicated my life to the Lord and after I'd hit that man jogging that I told y'all about and I just uh, started going to Bible study and even in my unfaithfulness I would go a week and miss a week and go a week miss two weeks but in in all of that preparation we were studying the uh, uh, a Genesis and I re and I remember 
being there for the study of the life of Joseph. And this is like in, in January to May. Well, in, in the, the last of June, 1st of July, I went from our church. It was the first opportunity I had to go as a counselor to our church camp. And uh, they didn't have so they the teacher that they were going to have was able to teach. And they asked if the teacher would teach this fourth and fifth grade class. I raised my hand. I said, I don't know what it is, but I I will be willing to uh, to try. They gave me the, the material. And when I got back to the cabin and looked over it, it was the life of Joseph. So God prepared me. <laughs> In my unfaithfulness beforehand, because he knew I was willing to be a vessel, be willing to do what was asked. That undoes me every time I think about that, that even though I, I didn't go every week to that Bible study, he knew and he prepared me for that. And so don't ever underestimate what you can do when the Lord's in it. And just like Saul here, he, did, he didn't really know everything that, that it was going to require. <laughs> and and he, he wasn't even, um, he didn't have a, a background of his own people and in, in, uh, what all the, he wasn't spiritual at all, but yet God chose him and anointed him to do the task. Do you think that, I mean, as we look at this, do you think that uh, Saul wouldn't have been able to have done the job? Marilyn? Yes? Uh, I think we can look back to what we read a few uh, chapters ago with Samuel and God called Samuel and Samuel said here I am Lord and yes. we learned in studying that that God would not call us if he didn't intend to give us the tools to follow through on the job and how many people through the Bible uh, their stories we have read who felt totally incompetent when called for the job but all that's required is to say yes. It happened to the disciples. They were uh, they were ordinary men, maybe not even maybe middle class. Okay, uh, and when God called Jesus called them, uh, they had no experience in preaching or reaching out. All they knew how to do was catch fish. But after the resurrection, when all that faith fill them the holy spirit fill them then they were given the tools and look at what what they started with the church yes so, those he calls he here equips. i am lord here yeah. i am lord that's it those he calls he equips yeah to do and and what did he tell the disciples he said you may be a, a fisherman but i will make you fishers of men of men right and uh and so the, then they had him for three years of them, him teaching them what to do. And so, uh, but as we look at Samuel here, let's go ahead. And so. Um, you want verse two read? Uh, yes. Okay. When you depart from me today, you will meet two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin at Z Zelda. And they will say to you, the donkeys that you want went to seek are found. And now your father has ceased to care about the donkeys and is anxious about you, saying, what shall I do about my son? Okay, so uh, Saul has anointed, uh, Samuel has anointed Saul with oil. And he, he has kissed him and shown his favor on him. So Samuel himself has uh, pronounced his favor upon Saul. And 
and they knew that he to be the seer, the prophet of God. So not only has he anointed him, he's blessed him with his uh, approval. And then uh, he begins to give him explicit instructions. So same as Saul, not very spiritual, not spiritual at all, or having no apparent leadership uh, qualities, or have an intimate knowledge of of God, uh, would probably have felt uh, the significance of this event. But with no fanfare for the occasion, it's just between him and Saul. So Saul, uh, Samuel knew that Saul would probably need verification so he gave him this is the first sign he gave, gives him three signs so this first one is what you will find what okay so two men by rachel's tomb and so he it was specific not one man but two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin. So, uh, who was Rachel? Jacob's. Jacob's wife, and she was the mother of the tribe of Benjamin. Right. And so, uh, and that's where Saul has come from. So, not only is it, he's telling her, uh, Samuel's telling Saul that you'll meet two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin. So it's in his own territory at uh, Zelza. And they and then he tells them exactly what he'll say to them. And what was that? Donkeys have been found. Hmm. Yes. And and what else? He's quit worrying about the donkeys and what else? His father, father was worried, worried about him. He's worried about him. And that's just, it, when we look back at chapter uh, nine, isn't that what Samuel said to his servant? Let's go back because my father's going to probably be worried about me. So, I mean, he had an inkling that that's what was going to be happening since they'd been gone so long. So, uh and then what's this, the second thing that he's told? The, fir the first sign is the two men, and, uh, and it's going to be in his territory of Benjamin at the tomb of Rachel. So next, what's the third sign? We haven't read. I see we didn't read it. We haven't that. gotten there yet. Okay, let, let's read verse 3. Who wants to read? Then you read shall three, go on. Read three through five. Three through what? Okay. Then you shall go on from there farther and come to the oak of Tabor. Three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you there. One carrying three goats, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall accept from their hand. After that, you shall come to Jebus Gulham, where there is a garrison of the Philistines. And there, as soon as you come to the city, you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with harp, tambourine, flute, and lyre before them prophesying okay go ahead and read set, uh, six then well, go ahead and read down to eight, through eight to eight okay then the spirit of the lord will rush upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man now when these signs meet you do what your hand finds you finds to do for God is with you. Then go down before me to Gilgal. And behold, I'm coming down to you to offer burnt offerings. 
and to sacrifice peace offerings. Seven days you shall wait until I come to you and show you what you shall do. Okay, so the next, se uh, the second sign for Saul to know that he that he really is the anointed one is what? To find the go the donkeys. Yes, that, and then then after that, <clears throat> you're he's, going, he's he's going to meet up with uh, three men going up to God, and they'll be carrying three goats and loaves, three loaves of bread, and a jug of wine. Yes, but he's just not going to meet them. Where where is he going to meet them? At Bethel. At the great uh, tree of Tabor. By the uh, terebinth tree of Tabor. So mm -hmm. God is giving incredible detailed instructions. So my thought is I don't listen close enough because God could be giving me more detail than what I'm paying attention to. But God is in the detail of our lives, is he not? He cares about everything that we care about. The minutest thing it, it God cares about. And so we when we pray and ask God to show us, uh, I mean, here Samuel had prayed and God showed him these details, the very details by which Saul is going to recognize that God is in the anointing that he has presented to him with so they he he'll meet uh at the terabith tree of Tabor the, there'll be meet three me, men going up to uh, Bethel and we'll meet them carrying the the three young goats I mean uh, hopefully he's leading them I can't see a, a man holding on to three goats at one time I think that'd be kind of wiggly but this, that's what scripture says Another one carrying three loaves of bread and another carrying a skin of wine. They will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall receive from their hand. So, uh, at this, uh, some commentator, commentators say that this offering shows the sacred nature of a kingship. Uh, uh, appointed by God and uh, let's see so uh, this is uh, so we have two men meeting him and they tell him that the donkey's been found then he has three men on the way to Bethel to offer sacrifices to God and and they would offer a portion of their food, uh, two loaves of bread, which had uh, probably also been intended for their sacrifices as well, but they shared it. And third, let's look at the third uh, thing that he would encounter. And after that, you shall come to the hill of God where the Philistine garrison is. And it will happen when you have come to the city. This is a new, new King James Version. When you come to the city, you'll meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with stringed instrument, a tambourine. Look how detailed. A tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them, and they will be prophesying. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you'll prophesy with them and be turned into another man. So, what's happening here on the third time? What's going to happen here during this third <clears throat> meeting? He becomes a prophet. Right. What comes upon him? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes upon him. And so, uh, then in verse 7, it says, And let it be 
when these signs come to you that you do as the occasion demands for God is with you. Uh, I think you it's think? also important that uh, we're getting more people so there are witnesses to what's yes. about to happen too. Uh, this isn't just Samuel, uh, uh, Saul, and God, which is, of course, the most important thing. But it's like the resurrection. You need They needed witnesses to verify that this event actually occurred, too. And so, so much is taken. So, the, actually, there that's four things that the... The two men and the donkeys, the three men with their offerings uh, to sacrifice, and uh, thirdly, the group of prophets with the, the interest and, and him designating what interest in, in, instruments, <laughs> sorry, and um, and, the, and the really the, the, uh, with that was the spirit of the Lord coming upon him. And so uh, Saul by this time has changed so much that when the, the next group will see here uh, what happens when they see Saul after these things have happened so it was when he had turned his back to go from Samuel that God gave him another heart and what, what this is it uh Psalms or Proverbs says, Create me a new heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. That's what's happened to Saul right here. Uh, he gave him a new heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came there to the hill, you now what hill was it? See, you remember, we just read it. What was the hill? The hill of God where the Philistine's garrison is. When they came there to the hill, there was a group of prophets to meet them. Then the spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied among them. And it had uh, verse 11. And it happened when all who knew him formerly saw that he indeed prophesied among the prophets that the people said to one another, what is this that has come upon the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? Then a man from there answered and said, But who is your father? Therefore it became a proverb. Is Saul also among the prophets? And when he had finished prophesying, he went to the high place. Now, we look at... Uh, so the people didn't recognize him that had come. And this is not the behavior that they had expected from uh, Kish's son. Uh, but when God does a work in our life, and we, I mean, let's, let's put it in today's uh, setting. Let's just say a person that has either been an alcoholic or on drugs, and they have that realm of people around them. And even their family know how they've been and what they've done. But when God does a new work in a person's life, it's, it's hard for those people to accept it a lot of times, isn't it? That they have, they've turned and they leave. But when God gets a hold of us, he really changes us from who we were. He gives us a new heart into being, uh, a man after his own heart like David was. So uh, it was astonishing, uh, yet Saul uh, seemed to have acknowledged these things to no one because we're fixing to to read a, about his uncle. Uh, then Saul's uncle said to him and his servant, where did you go? He said, to look for the donkeys. When we saw that they were nowhere to be found, we went to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, tell me, please, what Samuel said to you. So notice here what said and what's not said. So Saul said to his uncle, he told us plainly that the donkeys had been found. 
But about the matter of the kingdom, he did not tell him what Samuel had said. So what's your thoughts on why uh, he had uh, uh, he didn't tell him what had happened to him? Any thoughts? What do you usually do when, uh, what do people usually do when they get saved? Don't you want to tell it to somebody? To witness it to someone, yeah. Yes. I mean, that's what I've been taught all my life is that the best thing you can do is not to keep it to yourself, but to tell it. So why do you think that Saul didn't share what happened to him with same and and then these uh what Samuel had done uh, his anointing and then the things that he had met along the way to confirm God's anointing on him I would say his time had not come yet because yes no of there's a time lapse between his being anointed and his actually being a practicing king so to speak and yes. I, I think in whatever decisions he made at this point in his life were inspired by the Holy Spirit. I think you're dead on, Barbara. I think you're completely right. I think he was also following Samuel's instruction not to do anything, to wait for seven days. And then Samuel would come and tell Saul what he was to do. Yeah. So probably thought thought it best not to spill the beans ahead of time. Yes. So uh, that's a little bit different than, than how we are today, isn't it? So uh, because the, well, actually the, the longer you wait to tell <laughs> others about what's happened to you, the the greater period of time that Satan has to work on you and say, well, that didn't really happen. Are you sure you gave your heart to the Lord? I mean, make you question what you've done. So but here he had been anointed and, uh, and like you said, it, it wasn't his time. And, uh, and God had told him to wait seven days. So, uh, then let's look at, uh, Uh, so they're fixing to cast lots. This is a, a, a something that they did a lot in selecting, uh, 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 in finding out what God's will was. It, it was uh, how they did it in the promised land to see who, uh, when they divided the land up to see who would uh, get what, uh, how the tribes would receive their uh, portion. And uh, and it's how Joshua identified uh, the person responsible for bringing disaster out of Israel in one of the earliest battles in Joshua 7. And uh, someone uh, look up Proverbs 16.33 and read that. The lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. Okay. So we're fixing to look at that. So uh, in uh, chapter 17, I mean, uh, verse 17, chapter 10, uh, who wants to read uh, 17 through 19? Thereafter, Samuel called the people together to the Lord at Mitzpah. And the, he said to the sons of Israel, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought Israel up from Egypt and I delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the power of all the kingdoms that were oppressing to you. 
that were oppressing you. I'm sorry. But you have today rejected your God who delivers you from all your calamities and your distresses. Yet you have said, no, but set a king over us. Now, therefore, present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your clans. So Samuel's reminding them again, this is not God's choice. You wanted this king. So you're going to have to uh, set yourself, present yourself before the Lord uh, by tribes and clans. Now, I, I had a, I did a little bit of a uh, study about Mispha and the, the name Mispha means watchtower or spiritual watching. If you want to write that down, but it means watchtower, watching over, uh, and who can remember some of the things that has happened at Misfile before? You remember we thought we studied this. Uh, uh, Joshua read, uh, spent a couple of days reading uh, before they uh, distributed the land. Uh, yes. Read through what Moses had written. Okay, somebody look up Genesis thirty one forty nine. I have it, Marilyn. Okay. It was also called Mizpah because he said, may the Lord keep watch between you and me when we are away from each other. So this is, this goes all the back with uh, Laban's covenant with Jacob was at Mizpah. So uh, that's back in Genesis. And then uh, like in Joshua 18, uh, that's where, Barb, Barbara, you want to look that up? It's really Joshua. hard for me to read. I'm sorry, but it's very that's hard okay. for me to read. That's okay. I'm sorry. Anybody else want to read Joshua 18, 21, and verse 26? The tribe of Benjamin, clan by clan. Oh. Is that right? Uh, Joshua? Yes, I think so. The tribe of Benjamin, clan by clan, had the following cities. Jericho, Beth, Hogla, Emek, Keziz, Beth, Araba, Zemeraim, Bethel, Avim, Para, and Ophrah, Kafar, Amani, Hofni, and Geba, 12 towns and their villages. Gibeon, Rama, Beeroth, Mizpah, Kephara, Moseth, Mosa, Rechem, Irpiel, Terla, Zela, Hyaleth, the Jebusite city that is Jerusalem, Gibeah, and Kiriath, 14 towns and their villages. This was the inheritance of Benjamin for its clans. Okay, so Mispho again was mentioned in, in those. And then we Marilyn? Yes. I'm sorry. I left out what and you put uh, focusing on this, but made me think of it. I left out the most important fact about Benjamin when you asked about earlier what was yeah. about, and I said it was the smallest tribe. Benjamin was the only tribe that stood with Judah when the nation of Israel split and became the north and the south. And remember, well, we, we've talked about this before in the Bible study. We haven't studied it specifically, but the nation of Israel split north and south. Ten tribes went to the north and all became, I'm going to call them sinners. Two tribes stayed with God, Judah and Benjamin. Good. So do you remember this story of what happened in Mizpah with the Levites' concubine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the men raped uh, her uh, and then he ended up killing her, but the tribes of Israel met at Mizpah to at attack the men of Benjamin for their grievances, and uh, and a, a, a decision was made that day not to permit marriage 
between the Israelite women and the Benjamite men. So uh, there's there's a lot attached to this. So a lot of times when we skip over cities or you know maybe a monument that's set up or whatever, uh, you know it would do us uh, good to go back and look up scriptures that uh, pertain to a particular place because this is a really important place. So now we've added another important event to this by this is where the king, the first king of Israel is going to be set up. And so uh, we have, let's see, we've done down to the clans and, uh, and it says, and when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was chosen. When he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of Matri was chosen. And Saul, the son of Kish, was chosen. But when they sought him, he could not be found. Therefore, they inquired of the Lord further, has a man come here yet? And the Lord answered, he is there, hidden among the equipment. So they ran and brought him from there. And when he stood among the people, he was taller than any of the people from his shoulders upward. And Samuel said to all the people, do you see him whom the Lord has chosen? That there is no one like him among all the people. So all the people shouted and said, long live the king. Um, uh, so, and then Samuel explained to the people the behavior of royalty and wrote it in a book and laid it before the Lord. And Samuel, okay, so I'll stop right there for a minute. He wrote it in a book and laid it before the Lord. This is a covenant that's been made right here. What is a covenant? A promise. Yes. An agreement. Contract. The, like yes. a contract. Something similar. Yes. Not quite the same. But if the <clears throat> if it's uh, if God makes a makes a covenant, it can't be broken. He right. made the covenant of the rainbow to promise us that He would not destroy the earth by water again. So, uh, and then there can be a covenant between us and and the Lord, but it shouldn't be broken. But we can we can do that by not being obedient to do what we've agreed to do with the Lord. And so uh, this wasn't an arbitrary uh, decision. It was a covenant agreement and Israel's monarchy was linked to the Lord from the, the onset. So God was in this. He's allowed it, even though they've rejected him as their king spiritual king and guide, guidance they have uh, and counselor all the things that God was to them and he's reminded them of what all he did by bringing them out of Israel how he provided manna for them uh, he provided quail for meat he gave them the uh, a shadow of a, the cloud by day to so that it wasn't hot in the in the desert as they were crossing it, and by night he provided a fire for them by a column of fire. It was his presence. All the things that God did them. Their shoes didn't wear out. Their clothes didn't wear out. Forty years, and we'd be causing a ruckus, wouldn't it, if we didn't get a new dress every once in a while uh, or new shoes as women? Uh, but uh, but God provide, provided for their every need along the way. And all he wanted was their obedience and they weren't willing to give it. And that's why they had to to, to wander for four years. They just be, be to go in like 
Joshua and Caleb had told them that we can take these, this land, but they didn't listen to them. They didn't listen to the godly men. And that's really Marilyn. Yes. I'm sorry. No, that's right. And Moses foretold the fact that there would be a king like all the nations in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 through 20. And remember, Deuteronomy is, I call it Moses's final sermon. And this is when they're on the east side of the Jordan, or, or they haven't crossed the Jordan. And he's reviewing everything they've done. And he's foretelling what's going to happen to them when they cross over. And he, in Deuteronomy 17, 14 through 20, foretells a king like everybody else. Yes. And what's going to be happen with it? God had prepared them because he he gave them the instructions of what a king was for. Now I mm -hmm. read that scripture weeks ago, and that uh, but it wasn't the timing. It, this wasn't the time that God chose, but right. He gave in to the people because it was what they demanded. But it, I mean, mm -hmm. and that's why Saul. We know the story of Saul. That he he doesn't last uh, is because he wasn't God's chosen first chosen one. David was, and so mm -hmm. um, that uh, let's see. I was reading Israel's monarchy was linked to the Lord from the uh, on outset. Each be able to rule as he wished, but he would always be accountable to the Israel's one true King. There was indeed a man still to come, Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, uh, let's see, I stopped in the middle of the verse. Where was I? <laughs> While you're looking that up, Marilyn, uh, speaking of covenants, which is something we went into in depth, and I, <laughs> I have to quote, Marlene's unfavoritest word, and that word is if. <laughs> <laughs> and that covenants are are binding. Okay. And yes. you know, if they're from God, they're, you know, you don't you don't get out of it. But if the word if was added to that, then the covenant could be be broken. It, they had certain uh events or things or uh that type of thing had to occur in order for the promise to be fulfilled and i think we've got a perfect example of that in the uh, history of the israelites because uh god promised them if i may use a common expression he promised them the moon if they followed him were faithful to him okay and he was their god and had their hearts given to god okay but uh if they didn't do that then there were consequences to be faced and i think we need to remember that in our our covenants yes thank you barbara uh that's a whole another uh <laughs> long study is a co uh, is the yeah, covenant, covenant. Isn't it? Uh, and I love it. I've, I've done one, but it's been so long. I, I think I forgot everything I knew. Uh, but I just know that when God makes a covenant, he, he keeps his word. Uh, so we stop right there about uh, th he wrote it in a book and laid it upon, before the Lord, which was the covenant that uh, was made uh, with God and the Israelite people. And Samuel sent all the people away and every man to his house. And Saul went, also went home to Gilbus, Gilbus, and the valiant men went with him, whose hearts God had touched. But some rebels said, how, did, how can this man save us? So they despised him and brought him no presents, but he held his peace. Uh, where are we on time? Nine minutes. Nine, it, we're, it's, we got nine minutes till the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
remember do you remember all the things that uh in chapter eight that uh Samuel had told the people that what would happen when they um, asked for a king. What was all the th what were some of the things that was asked for when they asked for a king? Well, there were lots of things, but it all kind of boiled down to uh, they owed the king everything. I mean, they had to give mm -hmm. him money. They had to give him food. They had to give him their is their people as slaves uh they gave up sons and daughters pretty sons and daughters uh, they gave up a lot of their freedoms yeah. a tenth <laughs> of their like their stock i mean uh, all these things but look what happens here god touched some hearts of valiant men and they went with him but the rest of the people went home and uh and they they didn't give brought him no presents and but he he didn't say anything about it he he remained quiet about it and uh, so uh, and then I, uh, some of them just said uh, I mean basically who's this man how can he save us he's not any different than we are basically is what they were saying so they despised him and didn't give him anything uh, so. Uh, rather than getting into chapter 12, I mean, chapter 11, uh, let me, I was going to read another uh, scripture. So anybody have any, uh, any other thing they want to say about uh, chapter 10 before? Yeah, I have a note, Marilyn, in my okay. study. Okay. It says um, for chapter 10 verse 25 limits on the king though samuel reluctantly designated saul as the first king he insisted on safeguards much as the united states government rests on a document the constitution so saul's king kingship was defined and limited by certain rules which samuel wrote down and placed in the tabernacle as a permanent record oh Okay, didn't know so that. That was that was a the that covenant he wrote down in place in the tabernacle was uh, just like we keep our constitution in a in a safe place, uh, and that it would be uh, the record kept for everyone to see that, that God had uh, had provided these initial. Uh, things that were supposed to to take place and what was supposed to be given. Um, so, uh, anybody else? I find it interesting that Saul kept hiding himself. Yes. Um, you know, it says uh, mm -hmm. by the baggage. Um, you know, even though he was taller, the next verse, 23, so hard he was tall, himself, taller than any of the people, but yet he was trying to hide himself. What was he trying to hide himself from? What was he af yeah. afraid of or not sure of? Or You know, it's, uh, I mean, I don't have any uh, thoughts on why he hid himself. Uh, Maybe he, he didn't. Has her hand up. Maybe he didn't think he knew that God had not personally uh, contacted him or talked to him about this. Okay, let me read this to you. This is out of my uh, community Bible study notes. It's, it says they give us these think about. They said think about fear of taking a leadership role. Saul had show no resistance when treated like a king at the feast Samuel had taken him but when the time came to step up and take responsibility as Israel's first king Saul hid the perks of leadership are more often appealing than the responsibility inherent in it but God had called Saul out to a courageous service the 
God had given him power through the Holy Spirit, equipping him with what he needed to lead Israel. A humbling understanding of the magnitude of leading others is good, but it should be combined with the belief that God will give us what we need to do to do the job. So uh, he didn't, he took the, the meal and all that responsibility, but then he hid when, uh, so, I mean, maybe there was a little bit of cowardice there and he hadn't. Did, did Saul pray about this? Didn't say he did. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Good question. Mm -hmm. So maybe he like, wanted, maybe he just wanted the glory and the position without the work. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I can't imagine something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, but, uh, but in the last part of this, it says, but God would not let Saul hide, revealing that Saul had hidden himself among the baggage. So the Lord's, when we go back to that scripture, the Lord's ones put it out where he was. He's over there hiding in the luggage, the baggage. Yeah. So, so it just proves that no matter how hard, or how far you run and how hard you try to hide, God knows exactly where we are. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I'm struck just by the line earlier that um, God changed his heart. Yes. So, you know, there had to be something good in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, he did come forward when he was called. I mean, after he had hidden. <laughs> but, you know, haven't we ever, you know, just been overwhelmed with something we're asked to do? And it's like, oh, gosh, until the last minute. We just kind of go back and forth uh, trying to refuse uh, or accept what we are supposed to do. So uh, we're not that much different than Saul was, not really. <laughs> and uh, well, let's, uh, I know our time is just about, let me, this is a short, uh, this is the goodness, the Lord's goodness to the faithful. And it's a Psalm of David, Psalms 138. I will praise you with my whole heart before the gods. I will sing praises to you. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all, above all your name. In the day when I cry out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in, in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. When they hear the words of your mouth, yes, I will sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of God. Through Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me, and you will stretch your hand out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Father, as we close in prayer, uh, we just thank you for uh, the insight that you've given us about uh, selecting Saul to be the first king. And Father, we just thank you, Father, that your ways are higher than our ways. And you remove our sins as far as the east is from the west. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for indwelling in us and bringing your presence full and powerful within us. Help us, Lord, to be obedient to your calling. Help us to reflect your glory, that your name might be praised. We just thank you, Lord, for rejoice and for these women. And we just pray, Father, that we would carry out your will and your work. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Another lovely lesson.